my crafty friends and creatives from around the globe. Welcome to Hither and Yon Studio, or welcome back if you've been here before. Um, I'm gonna do a little different video today. Today's gonna be a little share video. I have a bunch of random items that I've been receiving over the past couple of weeks, and um, one very, very exciting gift. Well, two exciting gifts. One that is just mind-blowing, but um, gifts in general are just amazing, right? So um, I have, um, I'll save that for the end, but um, if you're not really into share videos or, uh, you know, like haul type videos, this isn't technically a haul. Um, most of these things I purchased, a couple were gift gifted to me, but if that's not your thing and you want to look at the tutorials, there's other um, items on my channel. But if you're into that, then stay tuned because I've got some exciting stuff. So uh, where to start? Okay, I'm going to start with gift number one. This was a gift from my daughter. Uh, she went to the Met and she got me these butterfly note cards, which I absolutely adore. So I want to share with you um, if you're in the area and I think they have an online shop, you can get these through the Met. Um, butterfly note cards and that is the UPC or whatever that code is. Um, so yeah, this is what is inside. It is a variety of note cards. I think there's four of each. Um, and one is more gorgeous than the next. <laughs> so um, that's number two. And then this one, I think that's a swallowtail. Does it tell you? Yes, a swallow. Oh, it tells us on each. All right, so this one is... Uh, a Calathea Sephira from the Butterflies and Moths of America. So I guess that's a book. Um, this first one was uh, Plate 18 from Butterflies. Okay, I don't know if it has a name. Um, so that's that. And then this one we just did. And this is valentine it's a watercolor i mean are these not gorgeous they're absolutely stunning so i'll probably cut some up and i'll probably send some out in happy mail and then this is just an array of different ones from plate one from butterflies i guess that's that same book uh emile elaine Seguet, french i'm probably saying that wrong um and this one you saw okay so that is that, and this cool little box, uh, this sticker comes off, so I'm gonna try to get that off carefully. And then I will have this cool little box to keep as well. So I thought that was pretty amazing. My daughter, thank you. And I will treasure these. So you may get some happy mail from me if you order from my shop. Okay, number two is a purchase I made from Corey Dahlman with um creating with scraps i'll link her channel below a couple of things so she makes these ink holders um she makes them with different amounts of holes so this one has three holes and it holds my distress ink here um i you know you can set these up a bunch of different ways i think she has a glue stick here but i use this black dauber a lot so i keep that there because it always seems to it's got like fuzzies on it now, but it always seems to have extra ink on it. So I don't necessarily have to have my ink pad out to get the amount I'm looking for. So I have these here. And then um, this is just, I've attached this so I can take the lid off. <laughs> so um, it's just one of the um, Ranger, a Tim Holtz type of, um, you know, distress things. And then I just put two little hook and eye things. And um, so when this is in here, I can just kind of, um, it's not really always on so tight. I can just kind of pull this off because I have my hands full with this, which is my other dauber. And um, yeah, um, the magnets I put on myself because I have these pins here, which I use to unclog my art glitter glue or some of my other glues. So I just kind of hot glued a magnet here. That didn't come with it from Corey. And then on the side here, I also hot glued some magnets so that I could attach my... Um, my, um, this is some kind of surgical tool, but it's, it's a, essentially a big tweezer. And I use that to kind of put little bits in. So, um, she has these on, she has these for sale, not on sale, for sale every so often. She had them, um, going on. So if you go over to her channel, 
um, she kind of talks about them when she has them available and she's experimenting with some new designs uh, that have even more holes. So um, yeah, go over there and if you subscribe, you'll be alerted when she has new stuff up. But this is so helpful. And on the bottom, um, it's, I'll just take these out. Um, it's like a, uh, a material that keeps it from sliding. So when it's on a desk, it doesn't really slide when you're like using the ink pad because of the material she put on there. This is like an ingenious item. I love this thing. Um, and then she just hand finishes them with, um, you know, I think it's some kind of rub that she's using. But anyway, so that's that. I bought that from her. Oh, and by the way, her proceeds, um, Corey is just so generous. Her proceeds go to uh, families who are in need. Um, I think at some points she's donating books. Uh, this recent uh, bit that she put up, she actually helped pay for a funeral for a local family. So um, she's doing this out of the kindness of her heart and her proceeds go mostly. I don't know if they all go because I can't say that 100%, but I know that a good portion of these go to that cause. It may be 100%. So check out her channel. She has all the details there. Um, but this is, uh, these are some other items that I got from her. And um, if you watch her channel, you know just how amazing and lovely all her stuff is. So I was super excited to be able to get my hands on some of the things that she makes. Now, she was having some trouble with her Etsy shop, so I think she just kind of does them direct for right now. I don't know if that's permanent, but um, you can check out her channel and get the details. Anyway, um, she makes all these little um, scrappy creations, and um, this is one that's just like kind of like a flip. And um, just another one with a little quote, or um, actually a definition of bloom. That's so cool. And it's stitched around the outside here. This is a um, recycled envelope that looks like she tea dyed or coffee dyed and put um, a stencil of a quote on it and then it's sewn around the edges. It's just so simple yet so elegant because of its simplicity. And then inside is a tag. It looks like she used an old notepad. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but you can kind of see some numbers and stuff on the paper. And so that's the back. And then this is a die cut that she kind of put some um, glazing medium or embossing on it to kind of make it shiny. Love it. Beautiful. I have this little tag again with another butterfly. Um, uh, I'm sorry, with a butterfly with more of that like embossing and made from scraps, which is what Corey does best. Actually, she, everything she does is done best, but <laughs> these um, she's known for. Uh, and then this is just like some pieces that were kind of um, put together and stitched with some lace and um, a stamp, I believe, or maybe that's stenciling. And then this one uh, is so pretty. Um, this is like a little booklet. And on the front, there is another die cut with more of that glazing and it's attached to this fiber that kind of flips up like this. And it's stitched. These look like maybe Tim Holtz papers. Inside, she has all these lace pieces. So I have all this lace now I can kind of cut off of here and use on my projects, which will be cherished because look at this. I mean, it's gorgeous. These are so pretty. Um, tickets and some various ephemera here that she has clipped on. When you flip this side, she has a bunch of paper scraps, so more goodies to use. There is a um, little mini journal in here, and this booklet itself, I think she's got it, she, I know, she's got a tutorial for something very similar to this on her channel. So if you go over there, you can make one of these yourself. Um, and then in here, there's like a little notepad. This feels like a um, like a mixed media weight, maybe. It's not really, it doesn't feel like copy paper, so it's a little heavier than that. Um, and then inside, she's got this little pouch with uh, some die cuts in it. And there is a die cut um, piece here, like a stenciled, like a stencil kind of piece from where she cut it out. And um, in here, there's a bunch of uh, real stamps and uh, tickets and things like that. So I'm guessing this is real ephemera. 
um, and not reproduce the ephemera. Uh, little, I don't know, bookmark with on a um, paper clip or a binder clip. I don't know what these are actually, what they're called. Um, and then inside the back, there's two pockets here and here. Well, it looks like it's one big pocket, but she made it two and then put in all these fun little pieces that I am so excited about using um, throughout my journals. So, and other works. So very, very cool little um, bits in here from Corey. I'm just gonna stick these back in neatly the way that they were. And there is, um, in this one, there's also another uh, cluster that she made. I'm just fascinated watching her make those clusters. So actually getting my hands on one was very, very exciting. And this has a piece of um, hook and eye that goes inside like this, and it doesn't cover up the cover, but it keeps it closed like that. And then everything that she sent me and she has special names for these. I'm sorry, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but uh, it's like two for five, two furs or something like that. And then this bundle. She doesn't necessarily always have them available, but when she does, she'll let you know. And then she tucked everything in one of these pastry bags that looks like she tea dyed or distressed in some way. So it's super yummy, crunchy. I love it. So that's that share from Corey Domin at Creating with Scraps. And, okay, next up, I ordered some, uh, some true ephemera from some shops on eBay. Um, this one is all music paper. So most of it is two-sided. I think all of it is two-sided. And it's just various, um, you know, sheet music from different eras. Uh, some of them are marked like, the copyright is marked. I don't actually know when they were printed per se, but um, they have that old kind of, you know, uh, worn uh, color change that I would love to be able to recreate, but is almost impossible to recreate <laughs> except in the real thing. Um, but these were neat. And so what I'm gonna do is a couple of things. I'll probably photocopy some to use as wrapping for my packaging. I'll use them in journals, obviously. Um, give them out as, um, you know, gifts when I'm mailing out items from the shop and putting them into various journals. So I think what I'll do is kind of read through the words and see what they say. And when they apply, I will put them in my journals. So I have those. And then, there's a shop, and I'm not sure if this is Etsy or eBay. I'll put it below, but it's called Cali Books and Crafts, and um, it's out of Poland. And all of these are, there's a bunch of, and I don't know all the languages, but they're definitely all foreign language books. Um, there's a few English books in here. Um, and some of them I think I can figure out, but like when you get into like German or Dutch, I'm not 100% sure which is which, but I'll just show you some of them. I'm not gonna go through all of them. There's quite a few here, but this is an Alice in Wonderland page. Um, these are some old books, which looks like it, I don't know if you know what language that is. Feel free to put it below. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it could be German, but it could be Austrian or something along those lines. So there's those. There's just some random fun pages in here. Um, and I wanted to get stuff that was um, not in English so I could have another element of, uh, you know, something different in the journals. This one is English. There's some French in here. Um, there's definitely Polish. And just a bunch of different random items. That one's kind of neat with all the numbers. Um, and this, this one that I'm going through right now was actually the free gift. <laughs> I'll show you the paper pack I ordered in a second. That's kind of cool. These old pictures, photographs. These would be cool on little dangles or bookmarks. And then this free paper that was sent. All right, and this is the actual pack I ordered. So um, you can see how thick this is. There are quite a few pages in here. 
Um, get out of the, you see there's like a nice stack of papers in here in various sizes, various weights. Some of these are very, very thin, almost like old dictionary paper, or maybe it's new dictionary paper, like tracing paper almost. Um, so there's a lot of those, a lot of different colors of that um, kind of aged paper, book page look. So these are going to look lovely on um, tags and in journals and things like that. There's some quirky ones like this with little um, calculations and illustrations from scientific books and, um, you know, just a variety of stuff. So this was a really good pack. These look like uh, dictionaries from what language I don't know, maybe Polish. Um, some fun dolphins and sea creatures. Just uh, some more book pages. You know, you can skip ahead if you wanna go on. These are cool, so these have some illustrations from where I don't know without a translator. <laughs> Again, some uh, scientific items. This looks like poetry. And then at, the, oh, all right, so we got uh, Washington and George Washington. And, oh, this is neat. I thought this was kind of cool. It looks like it's a, um, a chart of when certain things arrived or existed on the planet. I'm guessing that's what it appears to be to me. And a little chart here of a building layout. And then some music sheets, which are lovely. I think I'm just gonna move these over into the other music sheets so I know that I have them all together. And that was that pack. So I will um, put that link below. And everything was sent in uh, perfect condition and she included this little card with an illustration from Alice in Wonderland. I'm not sure whose rendition that is. Let's see, does it say? Uh, it just says 1865. So I'm sure, I see the, the, uh, the illustrator's name, but I don't know who that is. So anyway, we'll put this back in here so it does not get damaged. Okay. Put that to the side. I'm going to keep these papers out because I have a use for them when we go through something else. And I hope you're all doing good today. Uh, let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Let me know how your week's going. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. These are some books that I got from a local book exchange. This one you probably saw on my story recently. It's also on my TikTok. Um, this one I absolutely fell in love with. It's called Flowers of the World. This book is huge. Um, that's, I mean, it's, I don't know, what is it? Like probably 14, maybe 12 by 14, maybe even bigger. I don't have a ruler here. So we're just gonna have to guess for the time being, but it's called Flowers of the World by Francis Perry and Leslie Greenwood. All right, these are the, um, the end papers, which are just stunning. This color is amazing. And I can't even fit the whole thing on the screen, but. Um, it's just huge. It's amazing. It's absolutely stunning. And so that's the end papers. Uh, here's the book information. So it's Francis Perry and then uh, whatever their qualifications are, I guess, there. Illustrated by Leslie Greenwood. And then all this other information. Um, I did see a bunch of these on eBay. I did buy another one because I need one to cut up and you'll see why which just to me, I was like, I can't do any, I can't destroy this book, but look at these pictures, these, or these illustrations. I'm sorry. Um, Leslie Greenwood was an amazing detailed illustrator. I just, as soon as I opened this book, I was like, what? Amazing. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about it. I'm going, oh, the size of this book, it's super heavy. Um, I don't even know how many pages are in here. Let's see, over 300 pages. 
in here and every one is more beautiful than the last. I mean, these, and the paper is heavy. It's just gorgeous. So anyway, I'm like, how much is this book gonna cost? I have no idea, but I don't wanna leave without it. You know, and I had a budget. All right, you ready? $9. Now, I don't know, maybe to you, that's like, wow, that's a lot of money. But to me, I was like, what? Wait a minute. Maybe she said 90. I don't know. Maybe I misunderstood. So I had to ask her again. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did you say nine? And she said, yes. And I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. You know, you're casual. You're like, don't trip up. Maybe she got the price wrong. No. Anyway. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. Um, oh my goodness. Look at these. They're just, these are rhododendrons. There are just so many. There, um, there's peonies in here which are my favorite. I'm just gonna see if I can find them because the whole page is just like, what? It's amazing. Uh, poppies, look at these poppies. Are they not gorgeous? So anyway, um, I found, I'll go back to the peonies. I'm kind of a squirrel moment all over the place because this book just makes me like so happy. Um, I found another one on eBay for $12. 12. There are other ones on there. So look, I did see some for 30 and things like that. But if you maybe wait, you might find one. Okay, so these are the peonies. Look at these peonies. Are these not gorgeous? Look at that. They're just amazing. I can't even get over it. And I just can't wait to use them. <laughs> so anyway, that's this book. And this is like a linen cover. It is a little damaged here on the ends, but um, the uh, the one that I ordered on eBay actually had a dust cup, dust jacket on it. Um, so I'm interested to see what condition that one in, is in. If that one's in better condition than this one, I'll take this one and use this one to kind of cut up and use um, in various projects over there. The goodness knows how long it will take me to get through this book. But um, the, and then the other one I'll keep as, you know, like a, you know, coffee book, a coffee table book or something like that. Okay, I have some others here that I got the same day. I have this Robert's Rules of Order, which is basically a rules of conduct for Parliament. And it was, it's copyrighted 1950 and 15, sorry, and 43. And it's basically, you know, a, I guess a political rules of law, rules of assembly, stuff like that. Um, and it's a tiny little book, which I love. I'm not sure if I will keep it for historical purposes or if I am going to gut it to use in a mini journal because I love the size of this. So, um, but I'm going to look through it. I mean, I can definitely use these pages, uh, in various projects and, you know, I'm not really into the rules of order, uh, at this point. But uh, it would be interesting historically to kind of see this book and, uh, you know, go through it. Parliamentary law, uh, to commit or refer, division of the assembly, to amend. So it's pretty much like how to run the parliament. Um, I'm guessing this might have been part or it says revised. So I'm guessing there were ones before that. Um, it's got a little... Uh, I don't know if you could see it, kind of like they, uh, an impression in it from a seal. So maybe that was to validate its, uh, its use. Um, and maybe it was part of a series, you know, and I don't see a volume number or anything like that. It just says part one and two. So maybe the, there were a bunch of them, you know, like the lawyers or the pol politicians would have them. Um, okay, so then there's this one, which is a French uh, book, which um, is about, uh, it's, it, it's a, a, a play in certain, in so many acts, I guess, is what it translated to. But look at these end papers. Are they not gorgeous? And the outside is kind of very similar. I think they used like an end paper on the outside of both of these. So these end papers are gorgeous. They are in excellent condition. And this is the back, same thing. Just absolutely stunning. I mean, if you're into that type of thing, you're like, oh, okay. 
Um, and then look at the edges of this. It's just like, it's not all the same. Like it's got a little divot in there for where they lined it up here, which is just so cool. The spine has those raised pieces. It is kind of coming apart. That's okay. Um, I'm not really into book repair, but, and I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this at this point, because these end papers to me are just so amazing. I, I, I don't even have the confidence at this point to get this apart without destroying them. And I, I don't want to, this was not $20. Uh, I think this was maybe 10. So I don't know if it was discounted at the time, but anyway, um, this is called, this is what it's called. I will butcher that. So I'm not going to, um, to even try. Uh, I'm guessing this is the author. Let's see. Yes, that is the author or maybe the playwright. I don't know. Um, and this is 1907, it says, and I translated this. It's like a tragedy in acts and prose. Prose? I don't know. Uh, yeah. And then it kind of is just, you know, the acts, the, you know, the characters and what they say, the scenes and things like that. So I thought this was pretty interesting. I love the staining on this and the font and the way that the page, the paper has these huge margins. So I kind of fell in love with this and this aging on the end is just ugh, so yummy. I love that. So that is that book lovely and then this one is so neat I don't know this is from 75 and it's called simple living an illustrated workbook for the new farm and home by Jacques Massacre I don't know that's the name I cannot do French I I could I don't um and then there's these fun illustrations throughout the book this is the back and this writing, as you'll see, is throughout the book. It's it's so neat. It was I picked it up and I was like, look at this, it's so neat. So I thought this would be fun to use on pages and stuff. I do have to be careful. I have a selection of pages uh, clipped off that I'll show you. There are some illustrations in here of nudity, so I had to be careful about what I showed on camera. Um, but the whole book is written like this. And these cute little quirky illustrations with this coloring that is just really fun is throughout the book as well. Um, and so it says, Lynx Books, 1975, all rights reserved, uh, distributed by Quick Fox Inc., New York. Uh, it was first published in France under the title Savoir Revere, I guess Revival, I don't know. Um, and that was uh, 1973, so... All right, so let's go to the section that I have clipped off and I'll just show you some of the pages. So it's, it's the, basically the book is about how to homestead. It's like a 1975 version of homesteading. Um, so it has gardening, it has how to make clothes, it has house tips and cooking and things like that. And it has all this fun font throughout the entire book. So these, you know, I would take parts of these off and like put them on cards and things like that, journals and stuff. Um, and that is what this looks like. So I'll just do a couple more pages. I don't want to get into any of the nudity. There's these cute little bugs that are hand drawn. And these little areas are all, all these numbers are throughout the book. So very fun, simple living, an illustrated workbook for the new farm and home. And these are all the sections that are in there. So there's sitting postures, yoga, one dish meals, uh, making shoe polish, food storage bins, head colds, bees, pottery. I mean, this thing is just amazing. This is such a fun book. So I got that. All right, so that was my big book haul. All right, and now I am just blown away. I can't, there, no words can describe. <laughs> I visited my mother-in-law and father-in-law and my father-in-law gifted me with one of the most amazing gifts I've ever been given, honestly. I'm gonna tear up. Anyway, 
Now, this may not be very exciting to you, but it's very, 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 very exciting to me. And it is these old postcards. Now, how amazing is this? I have two like uh, photo albums full of these. And these were passed down from his mother to him. Um, and she has preserved these throughout the years. Uh, the story is that he, he, when he, when she passed away, I can't even speak. I'm so speechless. When she passed away, um, he found these in a shoe box and he actually went through the process of cataloging these and you'll see his, his handwriting in here, which is just beautiful. And, um, he numbered them. So you knew what they were. And, um, these are just so precious. So what I'm going to do is as I flip through, because I don't want to reveal the address on the other side, these are all addressed. They were actually sent to his family through the years. And I'm just going to flip through and you can see some of them. I'm not going to go through them all because that would be a very laborious process, but these are, um, I'll take a couple out. This is a, a Merry Christmas one with St. Nick and it's got some cold gold foiling on it. And um, a lot of these look like they literally came out of the factory. Um, they are absolutely stunning. They were so well preserved and I am so grateful to be gifted these. Um, here we have just some more uh, Christmas ones. I'm just gonna put paper between so the addresses don't get revealed. Um, and then, let's see, uh, yeah, these cats, these cats are on a lot of postcards. Um, another, you know, Christmas, a joyful Christmas. There's gold foiling on these or silver foiling. I don't even know. Some of these were just so well done. And, um, from what he told me, you know, they would just send these to each other uh, because a lot of people didn't have phones and things like that. So um, they would send these postcards to each other through the mail to say hello and, um, you know, just check in. <laughs> Some of them were really cute. They're like, oh, we're here. We'll be back in a couple of days and we'll be at your house for dinner. Uh, it was just so lovely. So um, they were really sweet. And they're all basically addressed to the same person. Uh, the postmark is there. They go back to 1908, some are 1906, 1911. And um, these will be cherished for a very long time. Um, I will be keeping these safe and passing them down through the years. So there's some more Christmas. There are some really cute um, Thanksgiving ones in here. So I'm just going to see. Yeah, so let's do this. There's a, a Tom Turkey and another Santa Claus. Um, let's see. Oops. This one's really neat. This was uh, this is like the one of the oddest ones in here. Odd meaning it's just like stands out. It's got this crackling on it. I'm not sure how well the camera's gonna pick that up, but there is like some crackling here. And then there's this pink kind of almost looks like airbrushing on this card and it's a raised card. A lot of these cards are raised and it um, says Thanksgiving greetings, but just, you know, you didn't see a card like this. Most of them are like this, at least the ones I saw. All right. Um, and then there were some Easter ones. So let's see, lots of Thanksgiving. Oh, these are adorable. Look at these, I mean, that is just the most beautiful card. It's got these little um, chickens or ducks and these fun kids kind of playing in there with these blue flowers look like forget-me-nots. I mean, just absolutely stunning, stunning. So needless to say, I was, um, I was overwhelmed. <laughs> I am still overwhelmed and uh, just the history behind it. I'm gonna see if I can find one of those pages where he went ahead and um, wrote the list. I'm not gonna find it now. Uh, let's 
it's in the other one. Oh, I think it might be in the other one that it's cataloged. So, all right, let me, um, let me put this one to the side. And I'll pull out that paper. And so those are all what he described as kind of like the, um, the prettier ones. But these are just as fascinating. So let me see what we have here. Yeah, okay. So these are the lists that he did and cataloging these and he numbered them and just kind of went through all this process, which I thought was just amazing. And actually I'm gonna have to use two of these papers to kind of cover this up. I just wanna make sure there's nothing, no personal information here. Okay. So these are local areas around this area where I am. Um, not the immediate area, but there's like New York City and various towns around here um, and things like that. And these are all photographs that were turned into postcards. And the back of these are postcards. Um, I don't think there's, yeah, there's one here that doesn't have any writing, but most of them are postmarked. There are a few that aren't, are not. And, uh, but for the most part, all of these are postmarks. Um, just a lot of old photographs and things like that. I'm running out of paper here, hold on. It's kind of, uh, yep, you stay there. Yeah, I guess it's not on camera anyway, okay. Um, there's old churches and things along those lines. Um, and then there was like, I guess, a, a local photographer that took most of these images and turned them into postcards and they were known in the area for that. And so um, they are on the back of these postcards as well. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? Let's go this far out. I mean, there are just pages and pages here. I am just overwhelmed. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm just, it's, it's too much. <laughs> um, so there is um, the State Tower Building at night in Syracuse, New York, Utica, New York, just uh, some of these old places. Some are illustrations and some are actual photographs of the location, but in all cases, let's see, let me see this one. Yeah, you can kind of see the address on that. Um, but they are almost all, if, if not the majority, sent and stamped and dated 1908, 1909, 1916. Uh, just some fun ones. There were a couple, let me see can find them like they they did old home week and yeah they're uh too funny yeah this one isn't marked on the back anyway so um it's like a little wedding I don't know they dressed up the carriages with like all these different things and uh would I guess parade them through town right that's what they did and so um, there's a lot of those in there as well. Um, just a stunning historical, uh, I guess, keepsake. <laughs> and um, just amazing how, all the work and love that went into kind of preserving them. So I uh, am very honored to be able to be the caretaker for the next generation or so, God willing. And I will be able to uh, pass them on to another family member who is interested in them. Um, we have some, you know, some kids in the family who I think might be interested in having them. So I'm happy to pass that along. So anyway, that's my share for the week. I, I've been kind of collecting these and I figured I'd do one big share. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I don't know. I like watching these types of videos where I see what, you know, people have. It's interesting to know what's out there. And um, just sharing these postcards is a treasure I just wanted to share with the world. So there you go. Hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day or night. Bye.